What do we do about our public education system? Uh, Mitt Romney has this uh, blueprint, he says, for privatizing American education. He talked about this a couple days ago. I think we had a clip about this. Uh, which one is that, Shane? Clip six. Okay, fire it away. So as president, I'm going to give the parents of every low-income and special-needs student the chance to choose where their child goes to school. For the first time in history, federal education funds will be linked to the student so that parents can send their child to any public or charter school of their choice. So there you go. It's, you know, vouchers, vouchers for all of us. Peter Ferrara is with us. He is the director of uh, uh, Entitlement and Budget. Director of Entitlement and Budget at the Institute. Oh, at the Institute for Policy Innovation and author of no, America's no, no. Ticking Bankruptcy Bomb. Am I saying that right, Peter? No, it's at the Heartland Institute first, and then it's okay. Entitlement and Budget Policy. Okay. So you're the guy who's entitled. No, no, no I'm, I'm sorry, bad joke. I'm going to free the people. I'm oh. the guy in charge of power to the people. That's what my reform is involved. All right. So, and you think that the people are not free, that, that this public education system that we've had in the United States for eh, about 125 years, really. It's been, you know, operating in a big way. Uh, Horace Mann was quite active in the 1870s and the 1880s. It started in Massachusetts. It spread across the country by 1900. Uh, that that, the, the entire 20th century, basically, that that system should be replaced by, uh, what, something like what Maria Theresa did in Austria in the 1700s, a, a totally privatized system? No, actually, uh, what the reform involves is a massive shift of power from the government bureaucracy that runs the public schools to students and their families, to low-income students and their families, particularly benefiting African-American, Hispanic, and minority and poor students who, you know, the upper-income people today, they have school choice. They just move to whatever school district they want. They buy a house in whatever or they send the kids to private schools. It's the African-American, Hispanics, the poor minorities that don't have school choice, <laughs> then you shift the power from the bureaucracy to them, because then the bureaucracy has to serve them, or they'll pick up and go to another well, school. Well, it's, it's nice to hear you're such a bleeding-heart liberal, uh, Peter, but uh, here's the problem. Those families, you're, you're saying you're giving them, you're, you're going to empower families, individual families and students, and yet they don't have the ability to teach themselves. They don't run no. schools. You're not giving them power. You're giving them the opportunity to buy something. And the question is, what is it that they're buying and who are they buying it from? And what Mitt Romney wants to do and what you want to do is give them the, the, the you want to take money away from me to give to them so that they can buy something, a substandard product, from a corporation. And, and we're seeing this played large right now in the, at, the, at the level of college where, you know, in fact, I was talking with a guy the other day who's, who's, uh, who runs a, a, a private charity that helps uh, military veterans. He's a veteran himself. In fact, he was he was a, a colonel when he when he retired. And he said, "We've got these private schools, these private colleges that are that are acting like vultures. They are literally play, preying on 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 GIs and and people who are just getting out of the military. They're wiping them out. They're giving crappy educations to them. They're leaving them in huge amounts of debt. They're making all kinds of promises to them. And in many cases, by the time you get around to to actually proving that they committed fraud, they've declared bankruptcy and started another company down the road. Well, you don't quite understand how it works because what what this would do is it gives the power to the students and the families because. They're the ones who can choose what schools they go to, so the bureaucracy must serve them. Or Just they will like take college their money now. And the bureaucracy will have to serve them, or they will take their money and they will leave and go to another school. But, uh, so Peter, my point, now, we're already so seeing this. Point? Okay, you just interview yourself, okay? And then you let me know. No, we're, we're, uh, we're already seeing this, Peter. We're seeing it right now. The GI Bill is giving money to GIs and saying, here, go find a college. And they're and they're going to and they're you know it's just like a voucher it's just like what Mitt Romney's proposing and what's happened is all these private corporations have come in set up these fly by night schools they're ripping off the, the the students they're they're creating you know for the first time in history we've got a trillion dollars in student debt is that what you want to happen to, to high school and junior high school students as well in elementary school no this, no this doesn't involve any debt this, this proposal doesn't involve any student debt now see Tom you don't understand markets which is why you can't analyze any issue let alone this issue. But when when you give the choice and the money, sorry to the, for my deficiencies, Peter. Students, when you give the money and the choice to the poor students, they're the ones who have the power. So uh, so now the bureaucracy must serve them, or else they will take their money 
and go somewhere else. <laughs> so that so whereas now So how far you, would a would a family drive their kids to go somewhere else? Do you think the, that a family might drive them fifty miles, seventy miles, three hundred miles? Well, it depends on the family. Why don't you ask them? Uh, but you maybe you could have some minority uh, families on your show, and they can tell you about how they, you know, what, what how they, they can, can afford to drive, drive their kid three hundred miles to the nearest big fancy white suburb. Well, you know, uh, <laughs> that's transparently silly. So I'm not going to even bother. No, it's not at all. What do you do if you live in the upper system, peninsula of Michigan? That's that's largely you, poor. Let me explain it to you. Uh, yeah, on the current system, if you go to your public school and you say, "Well, I don't like what you're doing here. I want you to change it." They say you're a nut. You know, you're the only one who's complaining. Get out of here. We know what's best for your kid, and you have no power at all. That's that's not true. You have incredible power under right. Title Ten. You can sue you can sue school districts if they don't educate your kids. Oh, so these poor kids they can't drive to a new school. Their family can't drive to a new school, but they can sue. They can sue the federal government. They that's, do. That's just great. They do with them. some regularity, they, they and what happens is that the school districts fix themselves. I mean, this this is this has been going on since the since the seventies. This is, this is a better solution than having asking African American families, poor African American families, to sue the government. Uh, Peter, first better of all, there's more poor white families in America than there are African American. Let's not make this about race. And secondly, well, it, no, it, 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 is about, the, it is about race because I'll tell you why it's about race. The average African American or Hispanic student performs at the same level in 12th grade that the average white student achieves in 8th grade. That's under your system, Tom. And that's why you're a fascist because you don't want to free these people. To have a better system, to have more more power, and to make their own choices. I agree with you, the, Peter, that our school system, ever since Ronald Reagan president? became president, has been badly broken. We time on this show, you idiot. We, we had a point. We had we had a great point. school you're system point. until Reagan, Peter. Point. Your foolish point is if you give them a choice, the only thing they can do is drive 300 miles to a new school, and that was your. If you're going to give them a voucher, you yeah. Know what? I'll bet you that you can't find one family in America that does not have a would not have a choice in less than 300 miles. I'll bet you $1,000 right on the show. You got the money, put the money where your stupid big mouth is. I'll bet you $1,000 right here that you cannot find one family in America that would not have a choice within 300, in less than 300 miles. Peter, I'm just, I'm just saying that before plan. Ronald Reagan put so Bill Bennett in charge of the education... Your stupid mouth is or not, big mouth? <laughs> yes, no, no, I don't. I'm not going to bet 1000 bucks on anything, you know, uh, frankly. You know, you're wrong. Uh, That's why you know you're wrong. No, it's... Uh, you, know, it's <laughs> you know you're wrong, fascist. <laughs> you don't want to give these poor families... The Peter, choice. call you me a socialist, you please, not a fascist. Call you me a socialist. Pose, I'm a democratic you socialist. system on the... You want to impose your system on them. You don't want to give them a I want well-funded schools. That's the bottom line, Tom. You think you're smarter than everybody else, and you're more moral than Can you name else? any country in the world, Peter, very quickly, where what you're proposing is working? Vermont. Any country. Vermont is a state where... No, Vermont is not a country. Choice. Yes, but Vermont is a state where they have school choice that it works better than your stupid system. Okay, Peter Ferrara. Uh, thank you, Peter. This is the Tom Hartman Program. The website, by the way, heartland.org or ipi.org. Peter, thanks for dropping. Oh, Peter's gone. (laughs) Peter had enough. We'll be right back.